Open Cloudy in Xcode and create a new group in the child view controllers group. I prefer to keep the view models close to the view controllers in which they are used. Create a new Swift file and name it dayView view model. The dayView view model is going to be a structure, a value type. Remember that the view model is going to keep a reference to the model. So this means that we need to create a property for it. This is all we need to do to create our first view model. The next step is moving the code located in the update weather data container with weather data method of the day view controller to the view model. What we need to focus on are the values we use to populate the user interface. Let's start with the date label. The date label expects a formatted date and it needs to be of type string. This means that the view model is responsible for using the time property of the model and formatting it to the correct value. Let's start by creating a computed property in the view model. We name it date and it should be of type string. We need a date formatter to format the date to a string. And we set the date format we want. and return a formatted date as the result of the computed property. That is all we need to do for the date label. We can repeat this for the time label. We create a time computed property of type string. And in the implementation, we create a date formatter. Set the date format and return a formatted date. There is one complication for the time property. The format of the time depends on the user's settings in the application. We can solve this by adding a computed property to the time notation enum. The time format computed property returns the correct date format based on the user's preferences. Populating the description label is very, very easy. We just return the value of the summary property of the model. The value for the temperature label is a bit more complex because we need to take the user's preferences into account. We create another computed property in which we store the temperature in a constant and we fetch the user's preference and format the value based on that preference. Notice that we need to convert the temperature if the user has set their preferences to degrees Celsius. Populating the wind speed label is very similar. The label expects a string, so we create a wind speed computed property in the view model of type string. We then ask the model for the wind speed and format the value based on the user's preference. For the icon image view, we need an image. We could put this logic in the view model, but because we need the same logic later in the view model of the weak view controller, it is better to create an extension for UI image in which we put that logic. Create a new file in the extensions group and name it uiimage.swift. Create an extension and add a method image for icon with name. We are going to simplify the current implementation of the weather view controller. We can use the value of the name argument to instantiate the UI image object in most cases. I really like how flexible switch statements are in Swift. Note that we also return an image in the default case of the switch statement. With this method in place, it is very easy to populate the icon image view. We create another computed property in the view model, image, and it is of type optional UI image. 
In its body, we invoke the class method we just created, passing in the value of the model's icon property. We are almost done, but I want to make two small improvements. The date formatter instance should not be created in the computed properties, in my opinion. We can create private properties for those. Great, we have now created our very first view model. In the next lesson, we put it to use in the day view controller.